All right, everyone. So I, I had some plans in place, and one of those plans was not to do a first round mock draft, but I think we're going to do a first round mock draft now that we have had this big trade. I mean, this is this is big. We've been doing mock drafts all year long, um, starting even before the regular season, and um, that's been with the assumption of a certain order, and that order has been uh, disrupted. So we're going to do a first round mock draft. We're going to see kind of where we're at. I already know because I've kind of gone through it a little bit. There's a there's a few wrinkles, but we'll get there when we get there. Let's go. With the first overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Trevor Lawrence, quarterback, Clemson. So um, not surprisingly, this pick does not change. We've known this since forever, so there's not a whole lot, um, not a whole lot riding on this pick here. Um, so we'll move on. With the second overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Zach Wilson, quarterback, BYU. So this is where it gets a little bit iffy. Um, not super iffy. I think most people are settling into this. I've had a couple arguments on Facebook about this, to be honest. I mean, cordial ones. But um, it doesn't seem to be as much of a slam dunk for some people. Um, a lot of people like Sam Darnold. I don't know if it's many Jets fans or if it's people from the outside or what, but uh, it, I don't think that's it, man. I mean, he's been a bad quarterback, and I understand he hasn't had many weapons, but so what? Really, really talented quarterbacks do better than what he's done, even with a, a you know not a lot of talent around them. Beyond that, you can make other evaluations. Um, so even if you and I can't exactly evaluate him on a play-to-play -play basis without the talent, the, the team certainly can. Um, and then there was also a report that they're in the process of making trades, but nobody wants him. Like teams just won't touch him, which is bad. I mean, Mitch Trubisky found a new team for a one-year deal. They can't even move Sam Darnold. Um, and there was a report from somebody, I don't know if it was a personnel guy or a coach or what, obviously it was an anonymous source, so who knows, but I'm assuming they're just not completely making it up. Basically saying the guy's just garbage. I mean, he's just, he's useless as a quarterback. So I know most people in the fan community don't, even myself, are like, eh, that seems a little harsh. I mean, he's not good, but yikes. But that seems to be the consensus. They've watched him for years now and have just basically said, this guy is just nothing. So it really just comes down to, at that point, are we talking Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, or Trey Lance? And um, I think Zach Wilson, I mean, he was probably the best quarterback in football last year. He was unbelievably good um and then he just lit up his pro day i mean he's he's been the star since forever so i mean the 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 real shockers if the jaguars end up taking zach wilson but that that probably won't happen but no i'm i'm, I'm becoming fairly comfortable with zach wilson going number two to the jets so that's what we're going to go with with the third overall pick in the 2021 nfl draft the san francisco 49ers select justin fields ohio state there's a, a pretty strong feeling. I mean, some people are saying it's not going to be a quarterback. That's ridiculous. Of course, it's going to be a quarterback. It has to be. Otherwise, the 49ers are out of their mind. Um, whether or not they move on from Jimmy Garoppolo, I talked about that a little bit yesterday. It doesn't really matter. Um, they're going to get the compensation for him, whether they move him this year or next year. The financial implications are almost zero. There's almost no dead cap money this year or next year um, if you decide to keep him or move him. So, um, if you want to just hang on to them just in case, it's not going to kill you. So that's probably the better way to go. However, if they want to load up on additional draft capital today, they can do that. Um, but I, I wouldn't say that it's the worst idea to, to wait and you can, you can get that for next year. I mean, especially since you don't have first round picks in the next two drafts, you can recoup a little bit of that for next year, but whatever. Um, the other big thing is a lot of people think Trey Lance is going to be the pick. Um, they cite the fact that it's Kyle Shanahan and that he would be able to utilize that. I don't doubt that. I mean, it, you, could, you can kind of just label it Kyle Shanahan and make any excuse for anything you want. Um, you know, if they were to get a first round running back, well, that makes sense because it's Kyle Shanahan. If they refuse to get running backs, well, that makes sense because it's Kyle Shanahan. You don't really need to invest in running backs, right? So it, it doesn't really matter. The point is he's a great coach and he runs a great offense. So you can make excuses either way. My thought is that Trey Lance is the wild card that has a high ceiling and a low floor. Um, and I think what Kyle, I'm going more the not drafting a running back route and saying Kyle Shanahan is the star of this offense. Right, Kyle Shanahan is in, in his scheme, and you got to have the right pieces. But what I need in a quarterback is a guy that can just do what I ask him to do. The running thing is 
I mean, it's a nice little wrinkle that I could add, and it would be a heck of a wrinkle, and I'm sure he could do some great and cool stuff with it. But at its core, I need a great thrower of the football who's really intelligent, who's really accurate, and who's just going to do what I say when I say. And I think that's Justin Fields. I think he's been incredibly consistent for three years. He's been dominant at Ohio State. Um, so there's no real fluctuations. There's no question of, well, he plays for a small school. There's, you know, I mean, there's, there's, it's not like he has the, I mean, he's got uh, some decent wide receivers, but it's not like Trevor Lawrence has, you know? Um, so I just feel like this is the safer pick where we know we got our guy and maybe he has some limitations. It's not like he can't run, but I don't care, dude. I don't care about that. I'm Kyle Shanahan. I need you to get the ball to my stars, right? We're going to run the ball well, and you're going to throw the ball to Kittle and we're going to dominate and that's it. And I just need you to do what I need you to do. And again, I think that's Justin Fields. So, um, I'm relatively confident with one, two, three being Lawrence Wilson and Fields. And I think from now until draft day, unless any kind of big news or anything comes out, um, which even even then can be diversionary, you know, you might, which I don't think that would even matter, right? If everybody's kind of settled in, why would it matter? Unless they're trying to trick the Jets into it. But the Jets are going to do what the Jets are going to do, and the Jaguars are going to do what the Jaguars are going to do. I always wonder about that. When you get guys that are way at the top trying to do diversionary, like, why? You're not going to trade and you know who you're picking. I don't know, but... Fake news does come out. It does happen, right? People start pumping garbage information out there into the universe um, just to try to trick people into doing stuff. But as of right now, this is my one, two, three, and I'm pretty much locking that in. All right, so this is where things get kind of weird. I was on board with everybody about the Falcons taking Justin Fields, right? Back when Miami was here, and they're obviously not taking a quarterback, and maybe Miami trades back, but... Um, I was taking Penny Sewell because I just felt like that was I was fine with that. I, I didn't have any problem with it. I was not comfortable taking a wide receiver because the value is not great as we see. Look how much value they got for trading out of that spot. It shows you how valuable that spot really is. No, I would not take a, a wide receiver there. Um, now we've got Trey Lance. And I'm sure most Falcons fans are like, just pull the trigger. Just shut up and pull the trigger on Trey. I'm, dude, I can't. I can't do it. There's... Look, he's too much of a project. He's too much. It's it's too much of a specialized skill set. And you went out and got Arthur Smith to be your head coach, and I'm sure you guys love him, and that's all great. But what experience does he have as a quarterbacks coach? None. He he was an offensive coordinator for one year. That's it. And look, look the the Titans were great and all that. I mean, hey, the Packers got our guy from the Titans. It worked out fantastic. But he's a tight ends guy. Well, what about the offensive coordinator? Well, he's a pass game coordinator. He's a quarterback's coach. Yeah, for the Bears. <laughs> I'm sorry. But um, his resume says Mitch Trubisky on it. So, no, I'm not taking a project from NDSU and saying, let's see if we can make this guy a star. Maybe somebody can. Maybe somebody can make this work for our scheme. But he's going to go to the Falcons, who are in the midst of a massive rebuild, where we're tearing everything down around him, trying to figure out how to make this thing work again. That's not a good environment, and I don't think you have the right coaches. I'm not saying you don't have the right coaches to plug in a great quarterback. I mean, what hap what you guys did with what they did with Tannehill and everything, incredible. But um, Trey Lance, no. Justin Fields, fine. Trey Lance, no. I'm just I'm not doing it. And again, because we're in this sort of basically a teardown and rebuild, I think the best option is to move out of the spot and let somebody else take him. Um, and again, I'm 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 kind of leaning toward Carolina. I think Carolina has been wanting Trey Lance anyways. Um, and maybe that's foolish. Maybe they don't have the right people either, whatever. I, it's just, again, that's kind of been, every time he's fallen there, it's an automatic thing. And I think we've had several trade-ups for, for Carolina getting Trey Lance. Um, you know, I know it's a new staff and everything, but they've, they've had Cam and it's, it's worked out quite well with, you know, I mean, they've built the team around a guy like Cam. So it just, uh, that's going to be my excuse anyways. So I am going to trade, and I'm going to use this uh, little simulators thing to tell me what the proper trade is. And in this case, we're swapping first round picks. Um, Carolina is also going to be giving a second round pick, but we have to give back a, uh, a fourth and a fifth. I, let, let's just say it's like a fourth or a fifth. I, I don't really care. That seems a little steep. I'm not doing that. We're, we're going to give back a fourth. There. All right. They say it's not a fair trade, but I don't really care. It's just a first round mock anyway, so we're not going to have to. That's what I have to plug in to make it work. Fourth and a fifth, but that seems a little, a little unfair to me. So um, that's going to be the compensation. Carolina is going to come up, and um, we're going to take Trey Lance. I do want to say, though, there was a strong consideration for Penny Sewell, not just for the Falcons, which I couldn't quite 
get to work in my brain. But with the Bengals sitting here and Penny Sewell being one of the better players on this uh, entire board, there might be some strong consideration for a team that really wants a tackle to leapfrog the Cincinnati Bengals and take Penny Sewell. So that is an option. Um, I looked at the Falcons and the the biggest issue I have, I don't like Caleb McGarry. He's not a very good football player. Um, I know he's young, but he's he's only played like two years and he's already 26. So it's it's just not my favorite guy in the world. But Jake Matthews, if he was like 32, I'd maybe consider it. And then we can figure out the right tackle, left tackle thing. But he's only 29 and he's locked up for several more years. Um, and so then you say, okay, well, can you put Penny Sewell in there and move uh, Matthews over to the right side? No, he's never played right tackle. Not a single snap in his entire career in Atlanta. I didn't go look up his college stats. I think he's played too long for me to even see it anyways. Um, and then you say, well, maybe you can put Penny Sewell at right tackle. And it's like, you know what? Again, we're in a rebuild. We need the picks. Let's just move back. And I think the, the, the most powerful push you're going to get is from somebody wanting to come up and get a quarterback. I could dabble with maybe the Lions want to tackle or whatever, but we'll just do Trey Lance here. But I'm just saying, if for the actual draft, I think that's an interesting little tidbit here. When the first three quarterbacks go, it's probably going to be Trey Lance after that, but if you can't find the right fit, somebody may want to move up and take Penny Sewell at the four spot because the Bengals are going to be really wanting that pick. Just a thought. So now with the fifth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Penny Sewell, offensive tackle, Oregon. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised how how much he's fallen out of favor with everybody. I mean, it's you're even getting Bengals fans saying, "No, nah, dude, get Jamar Chase, like reunite, you know, the the LSU guys and or Kyle Pitts or whatever." And I mean, it's just it's it's the offensive line is a massive problem, and Penny Sewell is he's been consensus top three the entire process up to I don't know if he's ever really been. I mean, somebody's put him at number one, but I, I think Tre, uh, Trevor has been number one consistently throughout but he's been a solid number two and I think he's fallen to like three at worst um it's just surprising I guess and I understand the the quarterback fever but um this guy is he's special he really is and, and I think part of it has to do with some people really starting to like guys like Christian Darrisaw and Rashawn Slater and kind of feeling like it's not that big of a difference I think it is um but whatever I I this is my pick and for me it's a no-brainer for you if it's not then I guess it's not but that's what we're doing with the sixth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Kyle Pitts, tight end, Florida. I'm actually very excited about this pick. Um, Kyle Pitts has not been getting the love and respect that he's deserved since since the inception of this, and he's finally starting to get that. Um, the the versatility that he's going to bring to a team, and and uh, you know the ability to help Tua in particular. Anytime you have a quarterback that kind of needs a little bit of extra oomph, I always like to get him a tight end. Right. Whenever you see, let's say, a quarterback go out and a backup quarterback comes in, if you're playing fantasy, consider that tight end because that's that's the safety valve. That's the relief valve. That's the big guy that's like, just throw it up and I'm going to get it. Right. He's not maybe going to give you the big plays, although Kyle Pitts will. Um, but I, I just I love it, man. And I, I understand Jamar Chase and Devontae Smith. And if they go there, I'm not going to be even a little bit surprised. But what a cool weapon that's going to be. And by the way, we can get a wide receiver later. We're not getting a Kyle Pitts later. We might not get a Kyle Pitts next year. We might not see a Kyle Pitts for five years. A guy that's a, 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 a guy that could potentially be a top five talent in this draft. And I know we've said that before about certain tight ends, and they don't super pan out. Eric Ebron was a, a, a guy like that. Uh, T.J. Hawkinson both went to the Lions, by the way. Not that T.J. Hawkinson's bad, but I mean he's, I mean what is he like top five maybe, um, considering where he dra got drafted, you would expect him to be better than that, but. Um, Kyle Pitts is special, man. He really is, and he, I mean, he's a guy you can legitimately put at wide receiver, and it's like that's fine. He'll 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 dominate at wide receiver. You can put him in line. You can put him in the slot. You could probably throw him in the backfield for fun if you wanted to. So, I mean, the Miami Dolphins have a lot of picks coming up. They've got a lot of cool stuff that they're going to be able to do, and um, you know, this is just this is just a piece, and it's going to be a real big piece, and it's going to be a real fun piece. And it's going to be fun watching the Dolphins. I mean, from the standpoint of, of not wanting to play the Dolphins, it's going to suck. But from afar, especially as a fan of an NFC team that doesn't play the Dolphins all that much, I'm going to have fun watching them. So um, we'll see how it goes. But uh, I'm excited about that pick. We're going Kyle Pitts to the Dolphins. With the seventh overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Jamar Chase, wide receiver, LSU. You know, I mean, it would have been a bigger question mark 
if Kenny Galladay was still on the team. I'm still a little bit surprised about Galladay leaving, but they're fully embracing the teardown and rebuild, and I respect that. I mean, it's one of the things where, you know, you look at just just in the NFC North, the difference between the Lions and the Bears. It was funny. I talked to uh, another guy in the FTFN network, Foz Sports, um, Chicago Bears guy. He predicted like 10 minutes before that the news broke about Allen Robinson that the Bears would be keeping Allen Robinson. And I said, they're not going to keep Allen Robinson. I mean, you know, whatever. It's it's a, uh, you know, look at look at Kenny Galladay. And he said the difference between the Bears and the Lions is that the Bears are essentially not rebuilding. They've decided to forge ahead, and that's true. And that's probably the wrong move. The Lions have embraced the teardown and rebuild. Kenny Galladay's left. Now, this isn't a must pick because they've got needs everywhere. But at the top of our board, we got Jamar Chase. we got Devontae Smith. Patrick Sertan is sitting there next. Then Jalen Waddle. So four. Three out of our top four guys are wide receivers. Um, uh, out of the top five, we got three wide receivers and two corners. So it's it, we don't have a ton of options. So I'm just going top of the board, best player available, and we're going to get the next Kenny Galladay. Um, because, again, we need so much stuff. Just take the best guy. The only other real option is a trade back, if you can move back a little bit. But the problem with that is who's going to move up to get Jamar Chase when they can still get Devontae Smith or Jalen Waddell, right? Or we have a bunch of other needs and there's corners and tackles and linebackers and edge rushers available. So it's going to be hard to find a trade-up partner because there's not that one quarterback sitting there. Although maybe somebody really wants Mac Jones, but we're not going that route. We're not going to go crazy with it. We're just going to take the best player available, and that is Jamar Chase. So this pick was brutal. I mean, I've been, I've been hemming and hawing about this for a long time. Um... But with the eighth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons back on the clock select Quiddy Pay, edge rusher, Michigan. Um, I feel fine with it. It, After really looking at it, I feel fine with it. Again, it's mostly wide receivers and cornerbacks, and I did strongly consider cornerback. The biggest issue, although I don't like the talent level of the corners, we just drafted A.J. Terrell. He wasn't elite. But I want to give him time on top of that. Isaiah Oliver, although he's not great, he's 25. Kendall Sheffield is 25. A.J. Terrell is 23. We've got a brand spanking new young cornerback group. And if we want to add to that, fine. I just don't want to do another. We've got so many other positions in need. We can't just do corner, 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 corner every year and then keep missing and keep swinging at it. We tried our best. Hopefully it works out. If it doesn't, fine. We'll try to check out free agency or something one of these days if we just can't get these guys to work. Um... Wide receiver, I just I can't pull the trigger on it. I know Julio's getting up in age, but I mean he's under contract um, until 2024. Not that he has to play that whole time, but he's still playing at a high level. Calvin Ridley's in the final year of his contract. He's gonna get another contract. He's still a very good wide receiver. It's one of the better wide receiver duos in football. So I don't want to do that. We've got two other tackles, and so I looked at that to see, okay, can any of these guys play right tackle? We'll we'll draft them. We'll move them uh, instead of Caleb McGarry. No, they're all just solid left tackles, and I don't know if I want to relegate them to right tackle. I mean, it's almost as valuable as left tackle anyways, but so that didn't work. I mean, and if I'm going to say, well, you're going to right tackle anyways, I could have done that with Penny Sewell, and I look like an idiot, so I didn't want to do that. Um, linebacker, you know, not that we couldn't use somebody else, but we got Deion Jones. He's a good linebacker, so what am I going to – expend a high first on a second linebacker i'm not doing that um there's no defensive tackles in the area uh there's no safeties to look for um so it really just kind of pushed me in one direction and that was edge rusher which is a need and according to the board it's a little bit of a reach but i you know i'm fine with it there's not a lot of edge rushers it's a premium position so he's probably going to go early right the the demand i shouldn't say there's not a lot of edge rushers this early there's not a lot i mean it's quitty pay then there's kind of a drop off, and then you get a pile toward the back of the first, more or less. Um, but I, I think it's fine. Um, in fact, we probably could have moved back a little bit more, but why risk it? You know, just just go with, uh, just go for it. So I think that does make sense. Um, most Falcons fans are probably still mad at my me for not taking a quarterback, anyways. But you'll be all right. I got you an edge rusher. It's a need. It's important. It's a premium position, right? I mean, it's you're fine. You'll get over it. With the ninth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Micah Parsons, linebacker, Penn State. Again, another real tough one. Um, I'm trying to figure out the offensive line situation. I'm, I, again, we have a left tackle in Garrett Bowles. I'm not moving him to right tackle, and I'm not drafting one of these tackles to play right tackle. I don't know who our right tackle is going to be. The, the only thing I can think is Dalton Reisner is going to move over to right tackle. Um, 
I know that's what he was in college, and then he came into the pros and played guard, and, and that's kind of what it is. Maybe he can't play tackle, in which case we're kind of in a dire situation. we got to find a right tackle to play there. And then maybe you do take one of these tackles and say, guess what, you're a right tackle now. Um, but I'm, I'm assuming we're going to move Reisner over, which means we need interior guys, and I'm not really going to reach on an interior offensive lineman here. We can do that later in the draft, try to address that stuff. Um, corner is a consideration, but I know we went out and got Kyle Fuller, um, and I think he's going to be fantastic. He was very, very good with the Bears. The, the, the funny thing about Kyle Fuller is he's one of those guys that in the right scheme is dominant. And um, when you take that scheme away, he just really struggles. And he hasn't been that great with the Bears. I think he's been massively overrated by, by Bears fans largely. But under Fangio, especially in 2018, things went really, really well. And I'm not surprised Kyle uh, uh, Bryce Callahan went over to Denver and just has been fantastic. He was great with the Bears under Fangio. Um, but it took, it took Fuller a while and he slowly progressed in the Fangio system. And he finally got to that point again in 2018 where he just was dominant. Um, but you had Prince of Mukamura who was dominant there. So it, it just, everything kind of came together, um, under Fangio. And again, when you took Fangio away, Fuller kind of just went back to being, you know, decent, but far from just a dominant corner. So, um, I think we need more depth at cornerback, but I'm not going to really address that right now. It wouldn't, I mean, I have no problem with getting Sertan and then, or, or Farley or whatever, and having just this dominant trio. I'm not opposed to that at all, but I'm just going to wait on that and, and fill a position that I think is just really struggling. And I think that's a linebacker. And I think if you give him a guy like this, that's going to be sort of my Roquan, right? The Bears drafted Roquan Smith for Vic Fangio because he wanted that. And it's been a great fit. Um, that, that, that guy that can just fly around the field and we know Micah can do that. I, I just think that's another piece that Fangio has been trying to build, trying to recreate what he built in Chicago. Um, and now he's brought back two of those guys. And again, this is going to be our Roquan. So, um, Micah Parsons to the Denver Broncos. Thank you very much. With the 10th overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Patrick Sertan, cornerback, Alabama. I know Caleb Farley is like the thing now right that's the number one guy but i'm just going to stick with the board that i got here if you want farley fine just switch it in your brain i don't really care but um i'm fairly comfortable with the cornerback thing it's kind of similar to the falcons where it's like i don't know we got a bunch of young guys sitting there but it seems like the dallas cowboys have kind of moved on from some of the other younger guys that um you know we've kind of lost faith in obviously we've got Diggs, who's the new young guy that we like but um it's kind of Diggs and and it seems like them, the, the the team as well as the fan base has kind of moved on from everybody else and said we need to get a compliment to Diggs. And so I'm fine with it. You know, I, I don't know that it's as big of a need as everybody says it is. But in this spot, when you got wide receivers and corners, and that's basically it, I think Rashawn Slater, Christian Derrissaw are considerations here. Um, I'm not going to stop banging that drum. I want to see Dallas regain that dominance up front. I think that's what really propelled Everything you had when when Ezekiel Elliott was at the top of his game is when he had an offensive line just blowing everybody out of the way. When when Dak was at the top of his game is when, you know, I mean, you, you just couldn't touch the guy. Um, and so I'd love to be able to get back to that. I know you still have some great pieces there, but you got you're getting much older and it's slowly starting to fall away. And I just want to make sure that we backfill that. Um, but I'm fine with the the logic of Patrick Sertan here, cornerback here, because he is higher on the board, and I do want to see the defense get better, especially at just shutting down the passing attack. And you can do that in several ways. We get some uh, complimentary pass rush, interior pass rush, whatever, but this is one of the things we need, and we're going to pull the trigger on it. Patrick Sertan to the Dallas Cowboys. With the 11th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Devontae Smith, wide receiver, Alabama. Yes, I know you got Kenny Galladay. I know. That didn't dissuade me at all. In fact, it gets me a little bit excited. Look, I've been saying I'm one of the biggest fans of your quarterback that there is. I like the guy. I really do. Um, he's got fumbling issues, but in the grand scheme of being a quarterback, fumbling? Okay, you know, whatever. I, I don't care. But um, as a thrower of the football, for a guy, and again, we talk about, you know, with the Jets, Sam Darnold, and, and how he hasn't had anybody. Well, not everybody has anybody, but they can still make some stuff work. And, and this guy's had really no weapons. Even his running back went down. The offensive line play was terrible last year. And I know Giants fans get mad when I say that, but it was. Um, some hope that it's going to improve. We're going to get Nate back and, 
and we got a new offensive line coach and, you know, all this stuff that we're going to kind of make work and should improve those things. I'd still like to help bolster the interior a little bit down the line, maybe not necessarily today. Even tackles not out of the question because Nate's getting much older and injured and everything else. But um, I love, and, I, and I'm dead sure we have to build up this offensive line, and I know there's defensive considerations and we could have gone cornerback and all that, but I want to give this quarterback one last real, real shot, and I think he can. I think he can work. Remember, um, in I'm I'm terrible with names. Um, <laughs> the Buffalo Bills quarterback. I don't know. Um, he was not super fantastic in his first year. They went out and got him a weapon, and he just blew the thing wide open. We're gonna go out and get him Kenny Galladay and Devonte Smith and Saquon's coming back. So, th- th- I mean, this is this is sink or swim. I mean, we're either going to dominate offensively or you're gone. That's that's pretty much what it is, unless the offensive line is just a sieve and that's your excuse, whatever. But, um, I mean, this could be fun, man. I've, I've been kind of high on the Giants. I'm real excited about what you guys did on defense and, and kind of turning that around and being better than I expected. Again, we still need pieces, and Caleb Farley would have been a consideration, but we'll get there. I want to do something for our quarterback and give him one last shot to prove that he can be the guy, and we're going to trust that our defense is going to stay strong and continue to grow, and we'll work on getting somebody else, you know, a pass rusher in the second round probably. Um, But I'm super excited about Kenny Galladay and Devontae Smith and Saquon Barkley, man. For a team that's been kind of laughed at for offensively being kind of a joke, ain't nobody laughing anymore. So I'm excited. With the 12th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Caleb Farley, cornerback, Virginia Tech. I feel bad because I know Falcons fans are mad at me, and we've had this agreement, man, just take a wide receiver and we're happy, and I don't have the angriest fan base on earth just trashing me. But look, I mean, Jalen Waddle's still there. I get it. But, man, I I can't ignore how bad this issue is at corner, and I, I hope you're with me on this, but this is bad. Um, Nickel Roby Coleman and Craven LeBlanc are, have not re-signed with the team. They haven't found a team elsewhere. They may re-sign, but so what if they do? Um, Darius Slay is 30 years old and wasn't that great last year. Avanti Maddox is young, but he was just horrible. We don't have corners. Like, we just don't have any that are any good at anything. Um, and as bad as this defense was, I just, I don't know that that's debatable. We got a first-round wide receiver last year in Jalen Rager. We have bodies. We got J.J. Arcega-Whiteside, which I know nobody cares, and Travis Fulgham, and nobody cares, and Hakeem Butler. But you know what? We got them. At least we have guys. And, and, you know, Jalen Hurts will try to make it work. Uh, We can still run the ball. We still have uh, tight ends that we can throw to. Um, Dallas Goddard is still there. I know we're looking to move on from Zach Ertz. Maybe that'll happen. Maybe it won't. But... We have options as far as wide receivers, tight ends, and running backs. We don't have corners. So, um, I I just, to me, that's just the, and I kind of banged that drum a lot last year, and I let it go this year a little bit because I was was on the wide receiver train. And look, if Devontae Smith is still here, if the Giants don't pull the trigger on Devontae and they go offensive line or they go defense to, you know, if they go Caleb Farley or whatever, fine. I'll give you Devontae Smith. At this point, though, I'm taking a corner. So that's just the way it's going to be. With the 13th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the L.A. Chargers select Rashawn Slater, offensive tackle, Northwestern. It's between him and Derisaw. Slater's higher. That's why I went with it. I'm not really analyzing beyond that. But uh, look, I mean, we, we drafted a really talented quarterback. And you want to talk about, well, he's got nothing. He's got no weapons, whatever. Dude, this guy didn't have an offensive line. He's the first time out there, zero offensive line. You know, I'm not going to say he doesn't have any weapons, but it's not like he's got this elite arsenal all over the place. Um, so I think we've got something special. We've really got to build. And we've done some some moves mostly in free agency. I mean, we've got, uh, of course, I changed this. Uh, Brian Balaga at right tackle. Come on, let me pull this up here. Uh, we got Corey Lindsley now at center. We went out and got Matt Feeler, who most people designate him as a right tackle, but I think he's going to be playing guard. He's played mostly right tackle in his career, but last year he was a guard, and it's pretty close between left guard and right tackle what he's played. So it it makes sense. We've got Corey Lindsley at center. we got Brian Balaga at tackle. We brought in Feeler to play guard. 
we need a left tackle and maybe we need some more guard help, interior help, whatever. But if we can lock down that left tackle spot, we've got left tackle, right tackle, and center who are really solid players. Lindsley and Balaga have played together for Green Bay for a long time. Real good pairing. And even if you're worried about Balaga and his age, Corey Lindsley's not that old. That's just a solid pickup. Um, and again, Feeler is going to come in and, and be a decent guard, which is an upgrade over whatever it is you've had over all this time. Um, and then you get a true young top tier left tackle. Again, we'll, we'll pick up a couple guards here and there through this process, but we may have, like, we might just be kind of done with offensive line. We've got it. Now we got Keenan Allen we can throw to, and we got Mike Williams and, you know, whatever else we can work with. We got Austin Eckler to run the ball. Maybe we get another running back in, in the later rounds or whatever to kind of round this thing out and help out our quarterback as best as we can. But I'm feeling pretty satisfied. We just have to lock in that tackle, and we're in a great spot. There really hasn't been a big run on tackles, um, and so we've got two great tackles just sitting there, and simple enough. I don't know that it gets any easier than that, other than choosing between Darisaw and Slater. And again, I'm not even going to play the game. I'm just going to pick the best available. With the 14th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings are on the clock, but they will accept a trade with the Washington football team. And with the 14th overall pick, Washington selects Mac Jones, quarterback, Alabama. So we've got some options for Minnesota here. Um, I just, I'm not massively in love with them. We could say we take Christian Derrissaw, put him at left tackle, take Ezra Cleveland, put him back inside. But I've always thought that was stupid. Ezra Cleveland is six foot six, 309 pounds. What kind of a guard is six foot six, 309? He's a tackle. Now, maybe he's no good, but the bottom line is we drafted the guy in the second round to be the replacement tackle. We just moved on from our tackle. It's time to step up and go be our new left tackle. That's what it is. If it, it's sink or swim time. Um, we could go Elijah Vera Tucker to build up the interior, but I'm just, it's a little bit of a reach from where we're sitting. And uh, I, I just think we get better value by accepting a trade. Chicago would love to come up, but obviously we're in Minnesota and we're kind of laughing at the fact that, that we didn't even pick up the phone. Like you guys are out of your mind. Plus it kind of worries us a little bit. Like, dude, Chicago's trying to get Mac Jones. Um, Washington's on the phone, wants to come get him. We should probably just make that happen. Cause if we don't, then, you know, who knows? Maybe the Patriots trade back and the Bears get Mac. Not that, you know, I don't know. Who knows if Mac's going to be anything. But, you know, we we've, we brought in um, Fitzpatrick, who's 39. We've got Alex Smith, who's 37. Let's bring in Mac, And then you've got a, a room that is just built to really be a great teaching room. I mean, Fitzpat, there's nobody better in terms of just intelligence and experience than, than Ryan Fitzpatrick. And Alex Smith is a, a really good dude and a, a smart guy. Mac Jones is going to learn a ton from these guys. Um and it's just going to be an opportunity to actually kind of step up and, and you know, we will actually have a quarterback. So, um, and again, from a value standpoint, let's just take the value. I, I've, I believe the compensation was a third round pick to um, for Washington to move up from 19 to 14. Again, if you don't like that, just change it in your brain. It doesn't matter. It's just a first round pick. But uh, Washington's getting the quarterback of the future, Mac Jones. With the 15th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Jalen Waddell, wide receiver, Alabama. Um, I, I, I had to think about it a little bit just because it kind of, I don't know, man. We, 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 does it really feel like a, a, a Patriots thing to do in the top 15? But Jalen Waddell is the 10th overall guy on our, pro, in our, on our board here. So it's just one of those situations where the Patriots are taking the best value, a guy that should have been gone but fell to us. So it kind of makes sense. We did add a couple wide receivers, Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne. Did, but, I mean, did we address the position really or or you know are we just kind of finding some filler um so i do think long term we need to find somebody at that position i, I kind of wanted to branch out this is sort of a, a kind of a lazy pick where it's like oh you just see a wide receiver you pick a wide receiver but you know what about taking an edge rusher or something kind of cool but top of the board it's a need i'm not going to overthink it we'll take jalen waddle out of alabama with the 16th overall pick in the 2021 nfl draft the arizona cardinals select J.C. Horn, cornerback, South Carolina. So we did add Malcolm Butler. So, you know, I think some people look at it and say, no, 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 we got Butler, we're good. But we lost Patrick Peterson. So we lost a 31-year-old corner and added a 31-year-old corner. It's a swap. We also did re-sign Robert Alford, who just doesn't play because he's not good and he's 33 years old. So we got Patrick Peterson and we've got, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Byron Murphy. Byron is young. Kind of hopeful, right? He took a step in year two. Not that he's a dominant guy. PFF has him 48th out of 121. So maybe a decent number two corner. 
Uh, maybe he takes another step in year three. I don't know. But so we've we've got Malcolm, who's the the guy that's going to come in and and sort of be the we got Malcolm number one, Byron number two is kind of how I see this going. But Malcolm is a short term band aid. Um, so we're going to bring in another guy, which which is possibly just going to be the future replacement for Malcolm Butler. But he's also kind of a safety net in case Byron doesn't work. So there, there's a lot of reasons why we still need corner plus depth. We don't have really anybody else. I mean, Drake Kirkpatrick, Jonathan Joseph, Kevin Peterson. These guys are gone. So, um, I mean, I believe they're gone. They, have, they haven't re-signed with the team, at least at this particular point in time. They may come back. But it, it still feels like a need to me. I don't know if, if uh, Cardinals fans have moved on or not. Kind of same with, with Edge. Like, no, no, we added JJ. It's like, yeah, but you lost your best pass rusher. So, I mean, Gregory Rousseau would have been an option as well. But um, I'm going to stick with J.C. Horn just because we need... We need more bodies, so I don't know exactly how it's going to be number one, two, three. I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. We'll figure it out. With the 17th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders are going to accept a trade from the Chicago Bears. The Bears are going to move up from 20 to 17, giving up a th- third round pick, getting back like a fifth or something stupid. I don't know. Um, but with the 17th overall pick, the Chicago Bears select... Christian Derisaw, offensive tackle, Virginia Tech. So Derisaw should have been gone a long time ago. And I'm sitting here looking at it like, can I justify taking Derisaw for the Raiders? And I just couldn't quite do it. Um, and I, I started looking at other things. And, he, and here's the thing, that the Raiders could use the extra picks. So they they got at least, I mean, I guess they kind of swapped, but whatever, they, they got a better pick. Um, but there's a big pile of, of guys that make sense for us. So we're only moving back. Uh, three spots, and if we if we know they're coming up for Derisaw, we can just scratch that off. There's two teams: there's the Dolphins and the Vikings, that are probably going to take guys that we might want. But we've got um, Gregory Rousseau, we got JOK, we got Aziz Ojulari, we got Christian Barmore. We've got all these guys: Jalen Phillips, and we can take any one of these. So we'll take the extra picks. We'll let a couple guys go. It'll help to hone in our decision later. Didn't get a ton of compensation, but we're kind of in a tough spot anyway. So let's recoup a little value and probably still get the guy that we want anyways so uh, and then for the bears it's like this guy shouldn't be here so we have to give whatever it takes to be completely honest again i have to put in whatever the the simulator says i have to put in to make the trade work otherwise they won't let me do it but they would probably offer a lot to be able to move up so the 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 raiders wouldn't be given anything back it'd be like a third round pick to move up three spots maybe a four i don't know it doesn't matter but um they would pay a hefty price to be able to move up because that's that's a great player that could could legitimately go top 10, certainly should never make it out of the top 15, and he happened to fall because of just needs and everything else. So um, a real big get for the Bears, and it didn't cost them a lot of money. So that's that's a big, uh, a big player for them. With the 18th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Elijah Vera Tucker, interior offensive line, USC. Again, kind of hemming and hawing about this a little bit. I, I considered edge rusher, but I, I was kind of pleasantly surprised with what you guys have. I It's weird. Like Van Ginkle graded out actually very well against the run and as a pass rusher. The production wasn't as good, but it wasn't bad. Um, and then Agba was was actually kind of a terror as far as his, his pass rush production, like 66 pressures and 10 sacks or something. Um so that was a pleasant surprise. And then obviously, you know, Raekwon was a, a guy I was a huge fan of. You got Christian Wilkins, so the defense. So I I just didn't really touch that. Um, linebacker, it's kind of kind of boring, and you guys get mad at me when I take a linebacker, so I'll stay away from that. I just I just don't like your offensive line. I, I know I've, I've taken tackles in the past, and it's like, how dare you? They're young. They can grow. Yeah, they can grow, or they could also just suck forever. I don't know, but they're not good. And you brought in Skura, who's not good, and your guards are not good. I mean, we got Tua. We, we want to build all these wide receivers and do all this cool stuff. Yeah, great, but, dude, we don't have an offensive line. I want to have a very good offensive line, and I'd love to be able to get a tackle, but we don't really have any tackles here. And, again, you guys get mad about that anyways. So I'm going to take a guard then. We're going to take Elijah Vera Tucker, and he's going to play guard. And there's, you know, consideration for him possibly being a tackle whatever whatever just bring him in he's a guard if you want to put him a tackle put him a tackle I don't really care what you do with him but um we have to get better on the offensive line I mean we're we're, we're doing all the you know it's we're building a beautiful house on a bad foundation that's that's what a that's what happens when you don't have a great offensive line we got the quarterback and the wide receivers and the tight end da, 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 da. except we can't do anything because our quarterback's running for his life and we can't run the football because we're 
we don't have an offensive line, so we're super one-dimensional, That which makes it harder to throw, and it's just, it's a nightmare. Gotta fix it. So this is step one. With the 19th overall pick, the Minnesota Vikings back on the clock select Gregory Rousseau, edge rusher, Miami. Um, we've done a decent amount in bringing in some pieces in free agency, especially on the defensive side of the ball, cornerbacks and, uh, you know, Dalvin Tomlinson was a big one along the defensive line. And we did bring in Weatherly, who's going to be a guy that can play off the edge. But I don't know that he's like a super dominant. It's a one-year, $2.5 million deal. Good edge rushers don't go for that much. Um, and so, look, I, I think we have an elite front four right now when you look at Pierce and when you look at Tomlinson and when you have Hunter. The one piece that's still kind of missing in my mind is the Gregory Rousseau piece. And so we are going to go that route, finish that out, um hopefully our cornerbacks continue to grow we've got the running back wide receivers quarterback i know you don't like your quarterback but he's plenty competent to be able to distribute the ball um offensive line would have been great if elijah vera tucker didn't go one pick earlier that may very well have been our pick but um given that he's gone i'm not going to throw a fit about it there's a ton of really talented edge rushers here we're going to go with gregory russo out of miami with the 20th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select Christian Barmore, defensive tackle, Alabama. Um, so we're getting into that defensive tackle edge rush territory um, where that's becoming more prominent. Jer Jeremiah wusu koromoa is a consideration here, but I think I want to wait on linebacker. I've already talked about that pretty extensively about how I don't like the idea of taking one in the first round, although it is a need because we went out in free agency and whatnot. Um, but I, I, we know that Mayock has talked extensively about the importance of interior pressure. That is incredibly important to him. We don't have that at this time. It's not that we don't have anybody that's any good, but it would be nice to get another dog on the interior. An edge rusher isn't, isn't out of the question, but um, there's not a lot of really good defensive tackles in this class. There just are not, especially if you want a guy with some pass rush. I, I think there's probably like two. Um, after that, you can get some nose tackles, some some good run defenders or whatever. But if you want a guy that can be sort of that two-way good run defender, bring in some pass rush, you got uh, Barmore and, like I said, maybe one other guy on this list that can do it. So we're going to pull the trigger here. And then, you know, we can come back in the second round and get an edge rusher. There are some talented edge rushers. There's a lot more depth uh, at edge than there is at defensive tackle. But um, we're going to get one of, the, one of the top defensive tackles in this class at pick 20. With the 21st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Aziz Ojolari, edge rusher, Georgia. So this one's kind of straightforward. We don't really have any good edge rushers. We didn't add any in free agency that I can see. Um, and we need it, and it's important, and uh, so there you go. I, you know, I... I there's a lot of question marks that I have, but, you know, it, it just is what it is, right? I don't understand the Carson Wentz thing, but whatever. I mean, we're not going to get a quarterback here anyways, so um, we'll let the Colts worry about that. But as far as from where I'm standing now, what are we going to do? It's it's Ojolari, and that's kind of, kind of pretty straightforward. With the 22nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Jalen Phillips, edge rusher, Miami. I think a lot of people here are going to be looking at Rashad Bateman, um, possibly go in that direction. But, you know, when I look at the Tennessee Titans, the problem with the team wasn't the offense, it was the defense. We did lose a wide receiver, so you are looking to replace him, but we still have a very, very good wide receiver on the team. You're not going to die because you have a top-tier wide receiver and then not a top-tier number two. It's such a weird thing. Packers fans have to deal with that all the time, too. Like, okay, you have the best wide receiver in football, but what else? Like, do we, what do you mean, what else? Stupid to me. Um... Not that it's a terrible thing, but I mean, if you look at the losses, out of the six losses we had, four of them came because teams scored 30 or more points. Two of them came because teams scored 40 or more points. The Packers and the Browns scored 40 points, 40 and 41. So, you know, fourth best offense, 24th best defense in points, second best in yards, 28th best in yards on defense. So there's no question defense is the biggest issue with this team. Uh, Jalen Phillips is a talented guy. We have to be able to bring some pressure. Have to. If we can't, then it's just we're wasting our time. When you get up into the playoffs, when you start going up against the big boys, you bring zero pressure, you have zero chance. So Jalen Phillips it is. With the 23rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Najee Harris, running back, Alabama. Um, 
I still want to focus on helping out our quarterback. That is the number one priority. If we had nobody on defense, I'd still be looking at offense. Because even if our team is terrible, I want to make sure that our quarterback is comfortable, that he's succeeding, and that he's thriving. We'll build on the defense later. There's a difference between winning and your offense being good, right? I, I would rather, if we're going to, you know, be eight and eight, but our quarterback is getting assaulted, he's failing, the media hates him, he's being mocked, it's getting up in his head, right? I, I I'd rather. Rather than being 8-8 eight and eight and have that happen, I'd rather win like two games, but it's because the offense is dominant. He's just really looking. He's like the only thing that people love about this team, right? Him and uh, we brought in Corey Davis, and that's a great pairing and whatever. You get what I'm saying, right? And that we So now they're saying, you got to help out your – you're right, we got to help out our quarterback. Yeah, shame on us, whatever. Now we're going to build on the defense. I need our quarterback to be successful. So um, – I think Rashad Bateman is a strong consideration here. Corey Davis and Rashad Bateman as a duo is scary, it's lethal, it's awesome. That's a consideration. I still really want to help out this offensive line. I know you guys like Fant. I don't like Fant. He's not that good of a football player. He's not the worst, right? He can. He's not going to just put your quarterback on his back all the time, so I'm not going to super push it. But Tevin Jenkins is a strong consideration here. Um, interior offensive line is a consideration, but we don't need to do that today. We don't need to do that, uh, well, now, today, same difference, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but then you look at the running back situation, and it's it's just not great. And it would be nice to be able to have that complement. So we've got the quarterback, we've got the wide receiver, and then you just get this dominant running back that can just get guys to back off. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just hone in on us as quarterback wide receiver duo you got to really focus on Najee Harris especially if you can almost make him a focal point he's the kind of guy that can carry a game again we got to kind of work on this offensive line a little bit but um you know if if teams really want to try to come at our quarterback and try to just drop down and make sure that he can't throw we're just going to give it to Najee Harris 25 28 times in this game and just going to just tear you apart because we're not going to let you just hone in on the passing game and 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 take our quarterback out of the equation. We're not going to let you do that. So, um, I think for that reason, we wanted to make sure that we have that lethal dynamic. And then again, I, I do want to build up on the offensive line in the future, whether we get a tackle in the second round or just hammer this interior. I know we brought in who Feeney or something. Like, come on, man, that's just that ain't doing anything for us. And and it really just goes to show how bad things are when we need to bring in Feeney and he's going to be a starter. Um, that's problematic. But again, Najee Harris is going to be the uh, another sort of focal point for our offense, and then we'll we'll build up around the quarterback, the wide receiver, and our our weapons essentially. With the 24th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Tevin Jenkins, offensive tackle, Oklahoma State. This is about as easy as a pick as we get. I mean, Juju came back, so I'm not really considering Rashad Bateman. Uh, Jeremiah uh, Wosu Koromoa is sitting on the board. I don't really care about that. Um, the offensive line is the biggest issue by far. I mean, if there's a, a, t a quarterback we can take, fine, we'll, we'll get a quarterback of the future. But no, I mean, it's it's the offensive line. I mean, it's just it's becoming a very dire situation. Um, we brought in Haig to be, I guess, a guard. I don't know. But that's that's not really going to work out all that well. I mean, he's just a, a filler because we need bodies at this point. But uh, we need to start getting some young, talented, dominant players because Pittsburgh does have a, a pretty good tradition of having really solid offensive lines. And um, we got to get back. I mean, we got a lot of stuff to do, but this is an easy pick for me. With the 25th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Rashad Bateman, wide receiver, Minnesota. So we've got like three number twos on this team after we brought in Marvin Jones. Um, and I, I just, I like your wide receivers, but we got to get that guy that's just dominant that's you know Rashad Bateman gets comps to guys like Allen Robinson that's what we need we need an Allen Robinson on this team the guy that's just gonna just take over games and um, we want to support our our quarterback it's not it's not a must but with Rashad Bateman if Rashad Bateman was gone we'd go in a different direction I don't think I take Kadarius Tony because Kadarius Tony is kind of similar to the guys we have he's kind of a gadgety guy I'm not saying he can't be a number one but he does cool stuff. Like, if he's a number two, he's going to be, like, a solid number two, like, for the Packers or something. I think that'd be a great pick. Fingers crossed. We'll see how it goes. I'm doing this live, so I don't know who's going to go there. But um, with Rashad Bateman sitting there, it's kind of an easy pick. I, You know, I'd like to be able to get some support in other places, but, I mean, this this is just a, a, a must pick. I mean, Rashad could have gone a long time ago. I think he's a very, very talented guy, and he has that true wide receiver one potential. 
With the 26th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa, linebacker, Notre Dame. Um, you know, linebackers are always kind of whatever to take in the first round, but I think it's a really big, it's a it's a big need, and it's also a team that has a lot of cool things in place. I think you could go with another complimentary edge rusher, but based on the board that I have, the next best edge rusher is Jason Owe, who's currently at 34th. He's probably going to go up after that dominant pro day, but I'm going off the board I have right now. Um, and right now I got runner-runner linebackers with JOK and Zaven Collins, and um, I, again, it's we, we've got a dominant edge rusher. We've got some great pieces on offense. The offensive line is dominant. Quarterback is decent, solid, whatever. Um, wide receivers are good. Running backs are good. You know what I mean? It's We've got a lot of stuff in place. So you can kind of look at linebacker and say, this could be the, the cherry on top, the star on top of the tree that we need to really just finish out this product and become a real contender. As weird as that is to say a linebacker is going to make us a contender, but, um, I mean, if you get a guy that's athletic enough and can can cover as well as stop the run and do all those kinds of things, it really can make a big difference on a, on a team and on a defense. So um, it's one of the few teams where you can actually get very excited about a linebacker. So we're going JOK to the Browns at 26. With the 27th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Jalen Mayfield, offensive tackle, Michigan. This is kind of a sad pick because it's based on the assumption that we're losing our right tackle. Now, Something to consider here, and this may be the next big blockbuster to fall, um, the Baltimore Ravens may be getting a fairly high pick um, because there still may be a trade coming. As I look at the news, there's, uh, as of a couple weeks ago, tons of teams still interested in um, Orlando Brown, and, and maybe they won't move him. But if you got a guy saying, I don't want to be here, I want to be a, a left tackle, whatever, we may not have a choice. And, and again, the compensation, I think, can be – pretty fantastic so as we kind of move up the board here you start looking at other teams that could really use that player and who could possibly you know offer something up I mean obviously the Bears would be interested I don't I, I doubt that would be enough compensation there would have to be additional compensation on top of that but point is there's a chance they end up taking a tackle and it's a lot earlier on in the draft or they take somebody else entirely because we got way up um higher in the draft or maybe it's a next year's compensation I don't know but um, again, this is based on the assumption that Orlando Brown is not going to be here long term and we have to find someone. And for a team that loves to run the ball as much as Baltimore, if we've got a massive gaping hole at right tackle, we have to fill it. Um, again, we, we run the ball more than anybody else and we love to run the ball and we do it really, really well. And so this is a massive need and, and very important. I did consider wide receiver Kadarius Toney, but um, because we got Sammy Watkins, it's, it's actually a nice pairing between Sammy and uh, Hollywood Brown. Um, I think Kadarius could be a role player, but if I'm going to take a guy in the first round, he's going to be out there on the field a lot. And I don't I don't want a rotational guy, so I decided not to go Kadarius Tony. But we're going Jalen Mayfield. With the 28th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Zaven Collins, linebacker, Tulsa. I really wanted to do something more exciting here. Obviously, we're not getting a quarterback. Um, you know, I don't want to go wide receiver. Your tackles are actually pretty solid. I considered possibly looking for a replacement for Teron Armstead, but at 30 years old, who's to say they don't give him a, a, a three-year extension? I mean, we got tackles playing until they're 35. He's still playing at a high level. I, I just, I don't really feel like doing it. Um, Trayvon Morig, the safety, not really. I mean, you've got a pretty solid safety. At cornerback, Greg Newsom was a slight consideration. Um... But, we, I mean, we've got guys. Marshawn Lattimore's a little bit of a question mark, but he's still a decent player. He's only 25. He's going to get another contract. we got Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. It just feels like the one hole we need to fill is is the eventual replacement of De Demario Davis. And, again, I know that's kind of boring, but we got to do it, and he's a good player, so let's just, let's just do what we know we need to do. I'd love to do something more exciting, but it is what it is. With the 29th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select... Samuel Cosme, offensive tackle, Texas. So I know I, I said I'd like Kadarius Tony, and I would. I think that would be a great pick and a great compliment, and I'd be super excited if the Packers did it. But the fact of the matter is, offensive line is unbelievably massively important for this team. Um, Brian Balaga's gone, Corey Lindsley's gone, and 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 to start the season, David Bakhtiari is probably not going to be playing for several weeks. So you know we've got guys that are 
we don't really have a legit right tackle. I mean, we got Billy Turner that can go out there and has done a decent job, but then at left tackle, we're going to have to use our guard slash center, Elton Jenkins, probably. So it's it's going to get real rough. You get Sam Cosme now, he can be your starting left tackle. Billy Turner is your right tackle, and you can kind of work out what happens on the interior. Probably going to be drafting more guys. Then when um, Bakhtiari comes back, Samuel Cosme can go to right tackle, and he does have experience with that his entire first year in college was at right tackle so he spent a year at right tackle two years at left i believe is what it is so he's got that versatility um you think about the importance of offensive line in matt lafleur's scheme i I just think that this is if he's here um in fact i i would be willing to bet offensive tackle will be the first pick for the green bay packers um and if sam is sitting there i i kind of think it's a no-brainer it could be somebody else i mean the packers always like to surprise and take people that everyone assumes are around later than they should be but um, they usually end up panning out. But either way, I think tackle is going to be it. And for this particular pick, we're going Sam Cosme. With the 30th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Jason Owe, edge rusher, Penn State. The only concern I would have is, is he a real good fit as a down defensive end? Um, but I, I, I think it'll be fine. I, I think he can fit that role. I don't even think Jerry Hughes is that big of a human being. Um, I don't know if this says here. What is he? 6'2", 254, so he's not. I mean, when you think about defensive ends, you think about these big 260, 270-pound guys. But uh, Jerry Hughes is 254, so um, and that is the guy we're eventually replacing. He's obviously getting up in age, and we've slowly seen the deterioration along the defensive line. We took a swing at Ed Oliver that has not panned out super well. We've, we've got to make sure that that stays up to snuff because the offense obviously has just completely taken off. And uh, it's the defense that's kind of struggling. Now, down the stretch, the defense was dominant. But again, you're starting to see the cracks. You're starting to see guys leave. And there's only so much you can do when when your stars start to leave. So we got to replenish that. Jason Owe is an incredibly talented guy. Um, The athleticism alone is just mind-blowing. So uh, Buffalo Bills, he's going to a great team in Buffalo and um, should definitely help them continue to dominate the AFC. With the 31st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle, Alabama. So it's a little bit of a reach. I've got him at 40th overall. I still think, I mean, he's a lot of the guys in the second round. I had somebody ask me this on my podcast. um, Who in the second round would you be comfortable with the Packers taking? I like almost the entire second round. And I think most of these guys, when you look at it, they could go in the first. Travis Etienne, Rondale Moore, Terrace Marshall, Nick Bolton, Joseph Asai, Wyatt Davis, Asante Samuel, Alex Leatherwood, Liam Eikenberg, Creed Humphrey, Eric Stokes, Landon Dickerson, Pat Fry, eh, Levi and Wuzurike, Carlos Basham, Davion Nixon, uh, Elijah Moore, Javante Williams, Dylan Raddins. I mean, there's a lot of tackles that could definitely go. Any of the cornerbacks could probably go. Tyson Campbell, Joe Tryon has a chance. I mean, there's nobody really here in the second round that if they went late first, you'd be like, what? That, that just, it, none of them. So um, Alex Leatherwood included. I mean, he could go anywhere in the 20s or 30s, and it would just be like, oh, yeah, for sure. That makes sense. Um, and so although technically it's a reach, I think it's just a, it's a big thing. We saw how uh, troubling it was for the Chiefs when um, Pat Mahomes was under just constant duress. And granted, not every team is Tampa Bay and, and just bringing that amount of, of ridiculous pressure. But if we're going to stay on top, if we really are going to be a dynasty, we, we got to lock this up. So, um, again, slight reach, but still a fairly easy pick for me and Alex Leatherwood. Finally, with the 32nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Creed Humphrey, center, Oklahoma. There's other things we could do. If we wanted to be prudent, we could look at, because basically what they're doing is they're running it back. They're bringing everybody back on these one-year contracts. Like, look, we're going to do this one more time, and then we probably got to blow this thing up. Um, so we could try to mitigate the issues for the future, but um, why not just stick with the strategy, right? So we, we've got the guys that we've got. It's just a matter of what what little holes do we have left. We've got the wide receivers. We've got the quarterback. We brought back Gronk. Um could possibly go running back. I considered that, but Ronald Jones is pretty solid. Um, so I don't know, but I think we could probably wait until the later rounds. We don't need a, a first round running back and Ronald Jones. Um, got great tackles. We got pretty good guards. Uh, the defensive line, again, we brought pretty much everybody back with the edge rushers and Golston and Vea. Um, the linebackers, obviously, we've still got. We kept the, uh, we have Devin White. We brought back Levante David. 
Cornerback, I'm a little bit iffy on. I know Carlton Davis is a solid player, but I don't know about Sean Murphy Bunting and Jamel Dean. But again, they're they're fine. It's it's good enough. It wouldn't be the worst thing to try to get a true dominant guy outside of uh, or opposite Carlton Davis. But Sean Murphy Bunting's only 24, and and maybe he kind of grows into just being that real true lockdown. So I, again, I just looked at where's the weakness, and I'm kind of looking at the center situation. Um, AQ Shipley and Ryan Jensen, or actually, I think AQ's gone. Ryan Jensen is, um, I think Shipley went back to Arizona. I don't know. Anyways, Ryan Jensen, not very good and 30 years old. So let's just get a replacement. Let's just find a center that's young, that's talented, and that's just going to continue to fortify. You know, nobody touches Brady. He continues to distribute. We continue to dominate, and maybe we get another Super Bowl out of it. Again, I don't know that that's the most prudent move to do. I'd love to backfill some of these positions that are going to be gone in a year or two, but... um, the Buccaneers have said, this is what we're doing. We're going all in again to go back-to-back Super Bowls, and we got the guy that knows how to do it. It's Tom Brady. So uh, let's just let's get the guy whatever he wants, and what he needs is some additional protection, especially up the middle. So Creed Humphrey it is at pick 32. Well, that's going to do it. That is our 2021 mock draft post all the crazy trades. And again, I do expect some other uh, crazy uh, things to happen as we draw closer. We are getting pretty close to the actual NFL draft, and that's going to be a lot of fun. I don't really have any plans for that yet, but we'll see how it goes. But uh, anyways, I hope you will uh, please drop a like for this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the little bell notification so you don't miss any other videos.